to a much higher standard than they are now. The next question is in the name of Xavier Turner. Kato, Mr. Speaker. To the Associate Minister of Education, why is Māori history not a compulsory part of the school curriculum? Um, Mr Speaker, the, the New Zealand curriculum does have Māori history as part of it. It has uh, the history around the Treaty of Waitangi and the signing of the treaty as part of it. Um, the more prescriptive aspects of that, though, tend to be in the higher levels of the curriculum where it becomes more optional. So it's at uh, level six of the curriculum, which generally is around year 11. Uh, so that's where you start to make subject choice, choices of your own. Um, and so some people are not getting that information. So I think one of the really live debates we've got at the moment is whether some of that stuff that's currently sitting at the higher level of the curriculum should be brought a bit further down the curriculum so that people are learning about New Zealand history from a younger age. Uh, the New Zealand curriculum, as I've said in answer to other questions, is quite enabling in that it allows schools to teach uh, in, the, in a local context. So if we take Māori history, for example, I think it's important that schools are partnering with local iwi to ensure that the aspects of Māori history that are important to their local community are what the school is actually focused on teaching. Um, and again, uh, I think there's variability. I think some schools are doing it well, and I think some schools aren't doing it enough of it. So it's not really a question about compulsion, because it's already there in the curriculum. It's just that some schools aren't putting enough emphasis on it. And so we're looking at how we can make sure we get more emphasis on that, and more of those partnerships between schools and their local Māori communities to really highlight which parts of Māori history they want to have taught locally. Uh, Punamu Fadehinga. Uh,